The first archaeologist that I ever met was an adjunct professor at UC San Diego. So I had joined my best friend and her mom because she was thinking about going to UC San Diego. I could not get into that school. Hands just straight up. That was not in the cards for me. Academically in high school, it was not for me. I did not love high school. But I knew I wanted to be an archaeologist, so I was doing the I was doing what I needed to do to get by. Um, my own parents, I don't think, saw this as a real career path or something you could study. So my best friend's mom essentially dropped me off at the anthropology building and said, I guess you can find someone here and left me alone for a couple of hours. I found someone who was so nice and who said, yeah, you can be an archaeologist. And he helped me. He mentored me for just the 15 minutes we had. He told me that I you know, did need to go to college. I knew that, but I did need to go to college. And he gave me a book called Archaeological Fieldwork Opportunities, 1996. It was pretty out of date, even by that point. Um, but he was like, maybe one of these programs has something for you. You know, get out in the field, see if you like it. But go out and get your hands dirty and do some real archaeology. I didn't end up doing that. I did go straight to college and I did become an archaeologist. So let's talk a little bit about what it means to be an archaeologist. Some of us do get our hands dirty. Some of us are in the field every single day. In the West, we're hiking. In the East, we might be digging holes to find what we need to find, evidence of human activities. Some of us work in labs. Some of us work in offices. A lot of us are interdisciplinary. So some of us are geologists or are working with or as geologists or foresters, artists data scientists, we have so many different things that we do. As long as you're studying traces of the human past, you can call yourself an archeologist. What you're doing is archeological science. People are surprised to hear that we work with artists, but they're so important. So there's a branch of art called epigraphy, which basically means copying, right? You're copying what people had written before. So when I went to Egypt, we had an epigrapher on our staff who was drawing exactly what he saw on tomb walls. Out here you could translate that pretty easily to drawing exactly what you see on, you know, Pueblo architecture. How were people making what they were making? We know that in Chaco, the, the size and the angularity and the structure and the, the layering of these, you know, dry laid masonry, that it's actually super important. It would have been really nice to have an epigrapher on my staff when I was doing my research this summer. Right now in archeology, span as a profession, we're facing a shortage of archeologists. More and more people are coming to places like Utah to live, and that means that we need to create more and more stuff, whether that be solar farms or train lines, highways, and all of these things are going through the desert where maybe we haven't been before in the last few hundred years. You know who has been there before? Lots of other people. Indigenous people since time immemorial have lived in this place. And then you have a mishmash of other immigrants in the last few hundred years. You have French fur trappers. You have Japanese and Chinese railroad workers. You have Welsh coal miners, right? We have so many more people who filled in this space and left behind traces of themselves and traces of their past. Archaeologists are the ones who need to go out and make sure that as we build those highways, as we build out into the new areas, that we're not losing something about our past that's going to be really irreplaceable. The career of archaeology, we're trying to make that really open to people. I'm going into classrooms to let students know that they can be an archaeologist too. I never had anything like that when I was a kid. I didn't know you could be an archaeologist. And so it's so sad to hear students say that to me now because we want people to be archaeologists and we want different sorts of people to be archaeologists because we're all trying to tell a wildly varied human story together. And so we need lots more folks. 20 years ago when I started, there weren't as many women in the profession as there are. Now women outnumber the men. And so we're a changing profession, we're a growing profession, and we have this economic driver right now. So we have the ability to become something really great. And archeology span is going to be an amazing place to work in in the next 20, 30, 50 years. When I was handed Archaeological Fieldwork Opportunities Bulletin 1996, 
the work was basically all the same. It was excavation. It was washing artifacts. And so I really thought that's what archaeology was until I got into the profession. And it's so much more than that. For example, when I started archaeology, we didn't really have anything called public archaeology. And I'm one of the first public archaeologists in the nation. We're actually this year, 2023, having our first ever conference of public archaeologists. There's finally enough of us. So we do something a little bit different. We specifically are looking at interpreting the past for the public. It's really important for the public to know what archaeology is. For too long, people assumed that if we didn't say anything about archaeological sites, no one would find them. And we know that's not the truth, right? We have Instagram, we have TikTok, we have all sorts of ways that people find this information out. They find sites and people are going into the backcountry more and more than ever before, which is wonderful on one hand. I want people to get out and see these places. As archaeologists, it's not my position to gatekeep those places, but we need people to be visiting those places the right way and visiting with respect. These are fragile places on the environment, and we're just not making any more archaeological sites. If somebody removes something from a site, that was a non-renewable resource. That will not grow right there again. And that, as we know, is data. And even small pieces of trash get chained together to weave a pattern of human experience. So everything is important, and we're having a real crisis in archaeology right now that Things are walking away from sites. People are walking off trail and disturbing the soil that we're going to dig in. Plus, for a lot of descendant communities, unchecked visitation like this is really hurtful. These are sites that are important to them, sacred sometimes. It's really harmful to descendant communities to behave this way on sites. So one of the things that I'm trying to do as public archaeologist is find a way that preserves these sites, but also gives people a better experience when they're visiting sites. So what I've noticed when people visit sites is that they walk onto a site and they expect something from it. They want to find something they've never seen before. They want a souvenir, a physical piece to take home with them, but they're not really sure why, what they want from that. And the fact is that from whatever is left on the ground, you're not going to learn a whole lot about what people were doing unless you are an archaeologist. So what you're going to do is leave thinking, well, there wasn't that much there, and why do we care about it anyway? And maybe you have a little pot shirt or a little arrowhead that over the years, maybe it means less and less to you. One of the ways I think that we can go to sites without harming them is not expect the site to do the work for you. We're going to put in the work. So when you get to a site, you don't even need to leave the trail. Maybe you just take a deep breath and you look around and you listen and you feel the wind and you think about what the human experience would have been like in this place. Maybe you've done a little bit of reading beforehand and maybe you know a little bit about how people lived their lives or maybe you haven't. Maybe you just reflect on how nice it is to be in this place at the same time as these physical remnants are. How amazing that is, that you are here for this one moment in time, and people were there back a thousand years ago, a hundred years ago, however long. Like, that's really an incredible experience. And I think it's one that if you're doing the work yourself, it's going to be more fulfilling to you, you'll have a better time, and it doesn't damage the site. Nothing is gonna walk away from the site. You're not going to damage it. So you can leave that site knowing that you contributed to that site's continuing existence. You stewarded the land really well, and you became a part of history by not touching the history.